Hey guys, Josh with Depp Ape Channel, and today what we're going to be talking about is something that Caterpillar designed back in the 1970s, and it was truly innovative. And they even produced it, however, not many people ever actually got to use it, and doesn't seem like many people have ever heard of it. And it's not actually an engine, it's not a earth-moving machine or anything like that, it's actually a transmission. And on highway transmission, now you might be saying, well, of course, Cat made off-highway transmissions, they still do, and that's true. Cat actually has made on highway transmissions before also. I even did a video. They were the CX series of transmissions. But way before the CX series, there was a transmission they made called the 7155. And it was a semi-automatic, kind of manual, kind of automatic transmission that Caterpillar made. And it was truly innovative. It was either a direct or overdrive transmission. They had two different models of that. It was an air shifted, selected manual transmission. It didn't automatically shift itself though. It had a 10 disc clutch pack and no clutch pedal. It's really weird. Uh, they were only produced in military vehicles though and the specifics on it and the design behind it are very cool. Now before we get too deep into the video, I wanted to say a special thank you to Johnny G, John Goldsmith. I wouldn't even have heard of this if it wasn't for him. He recommended doing a video on it, and he sent me some very helpful information on it. Also, I want to send a special shout out to Wes Simpson, who has his own YouTube channel, who has a bunch of information and videos and pictures on this, and he said I can use some of those. So I'm going to be showing you what the shifter looked like, what the transmission looked like, and I'll put a link to Wes's channel in the description here as well. Let's discuss the CAT 7155. All right, guys, so let's go back to the mid-70s. I've already got sideburns going, so we'll fit right in there. The trucking industry, of course, in the United States in the 50s, 60s, 70s was growing. It was booming. Uh, a lot more stuff was being transported either from overseas and then trucked all over the United States or just in, inside the United States. Trains, while very efficient, don't really get you the products directly where you need them to, like trucking can. So, of course, that's why the trucking industry is growing. And one thing in particular, trucks, one of the things that makes it a hard industry to get into is, of course, they're a lot harder to drive than a vehicle. And a lot of that has to do with the transmission itself, of course. Manual transmissions, which have been the main transmission style in trucking for so long, it's not always the easiest to get into if you've never uh, ran one before. Now, that is basically the reasoning behind why Cat tried to develop this transmission. Now, doing some research here, it looked like Allison transmission actually came out in 1954, but from what I could find, not very popular. I didn't see hardly any out there before the 1000 series came out in the mid 90s. And mostly Allison's, you'll see folks, are buses and RVs almost never see them in trucks. Now, maybe that's not true currently, but at least when I'm working on them, cat engines, you'd never see an Allison unless it's in a motorhome. So Cat's idea was to make a very efficient, basically a direct drive, like a manual transmission, but without the problems associated with a, an automatic transmission where you have a loss of efficiency. So they wanted to make a 95% or higher efficient transmission but also not have it be a manual transmission where you have to shift it and use a clutch. One thing Wes had sent me was, it looks like from a conference from 1975 from the Society of Automotive of Engineers, which is SAE. And two of the presenters, it looks like, or at least the authors of this article were from Caterpillar. West Coast meeting from 1975, August 11th. Wow, we're almost at the 50 year mark from when that was. And basically, it was the design and development of the Caterpillar 7155 semi-automatic heavy-duty truck transmission. And that's what they're referring to there is the efficiency being of highest importance, 95% efficiency. So as we already mentioned, a um, little brief description about the 7155. The 7155 transmission is a 16 forward, two reverse ratio, semi-automatic, quick-shifting mechanical drive transmission. And yeah, it's a 16 geared automatic, which the Allisons aren't, they don't have that many gears. I think the heavy duty ones only have six forward gears and a single reverse. I don't know in a military application if that is the same. Uh, one other thing that's interesting, well, there's lots of interesting things about this, but this is actually a, a triple shaft transmission. So if you're familiar with Eaton transmissions, they have 
two or dual main shafts which basically hold all the gears and that helps them be a strong transmission. Well, this is a triple shaft, so they actually have three separate gear shafts in there. And I, as I already mentioned, it uses a clutch that's a 10 disc clutch. Now, a lot of automotive applications, they run a single disc clutch and a lot of trucks, most Eatons run a two disc clutch. This one runs a 10 disc clutch. Now you might be wondering if there's no clutch pedal, how do you run a clutch? Well, it's actually what they call a centrifugal clutch. And some bus ZF style transmissions actually run this also. So in order for the clutch to engage, you have to reach a certain RPM. And then actually just the centrifugal motion of the clutch itself helps it to engage or it causes it to engage. Where is it? It has to reach 755 to start engaging and then it's fully engaged above 1000 RPM or about 1100 RPM. That's pretty cool. So there's no real adjustment or anything like that. It's just a centrifugal clutch. Now, of course, that doesn't make it light. I actually had to change a centrifugal clutch once in a bus transmission. That was the heaviest clutch assembly I've ever seen. I mean, an Eaton dual disc clutch is pretty heavy already, but this set must have been quite heavy. One weird, really weird thing is if the shifter of this, it is not like any shifter I've ever seen, folks. There's no drive or simple reverse, or it's not like a manual where you're, you know, it has like an H pattern. Um, there's a video of it shifting. I pulled it from Wes's channel. Let's watch that. It's from Wes Simpson's channel. I'll show you a picture of the shifter itself. It's kind of obfuscated here. So yeah, notice he's only accelerating. There's no clutch. Yeah, to sort of shift it, you literally just move that tiny little knob over each time. And there's something actually that connects this directly to the transmission. It's not run off a data link or a cable or anything like that. It's actually called an umbilical cord. So it's not really repairable. You literally have to connect this assembly to the transmission itself. So yeah, if you see you come to a stop here, you have to reset it back to the lowest gear there, or at least whatever gear you want. And you don't actually have to go to each gear. You can start in a second or fourth, depending on the load. And you can skip gears if you want to also. So it's pretty cool. But yeah, you can't just, it's not automatic. You don't set and forget it. You have to shift it each time, which could get, I could see being a little tedious. But of course, in a manual, you have to do that anyway. And it is air. You can actually hear the air solenoids. It's air shifted. Pretty cool. Not, not something like that that I've never driven. So yeah, you actually, it has to be in an air-operated vehicle also, meaning it has an air brakes or at least an air system because the transmission is fully air-controlled. Now you're saying that Cat produced these, but you may have never seen them in a truck. Well, they did produce them initially. Getting back here discusses some with the Society of Automotive Engineers here. So I'll read this little excerpt here. So the 12 experimental units accumulated over 3 million miles in various applications from an 11 axle Michigan train rig hauling sand and gravel in the Detroit area to haul line units operating primarily on interstate highways. The transmission in the trucks shown accumulated 500,000 miles behind a 375 horsepower engine over a two and a half year period. Now, not, not only is that impressive, but that's a lot of mileage in two and a half years. I mean, 500,000 in two and a half years. Driver and owner reactions were enthusiastic. Drivers liked the 7155 because there was little effort required with the fingertip controls and no clutch pedal to operate. They could shift smoothly and dependably in all types of operations. They could concentrate more on driving and less on shifting. So that's kind of the reason of having an automatic or a semi-automatic in this reason is yeah you're not feathering the clutch or having to deal with anything like that like that so what are some other interesting things about this well it actually uses engine oil not any sort of transmission fluid or um, gear oil it uses engine oil it has its own little oil pump inside of the transmission that runs off the gear set as well to produce oil pressure throughout the transmission pretty interesting According to John Goldsmith, these have to have very clean air, and the best thing to do is run a regulator 
and use some sort of actually a, a desiccant, but also an oiling system for the air system, kind of like you'd run for an air tool setup. Apparently moisture and low air pressure, very, very bad for these transmissions. Now, like I said, CAT, while they did make a few experimental ones and put them behind trucks, they never actually made one in an on-highway application for production. They were only used in military vehicles, in particular the M920, assuming that's how you say it, M920 series engine, which are just big military vehicles. And they didn't actually mate them with CAT engines. Pretty much all these ran in behind a Cummins. A Cummins 400, it looks like, was the most common application to have a Cummins 400. And then the CAT 7155, which seems kind of weird to have not match set. You know, why not run a 1693 or 1674 or 3306 to the 7155? But it's the military. Who knows why they do certain things? And... Yeah, that, that's where these things were made, and they're still out there because they made quite a few of them for a long time in the 70s, it looks like the 80s, for these M920s. And that's basically where all the videos and stuff you see them now is people that have bought these old military vehicles, and they're still running these 7155s. Now, how about some other specifications? So since this was a manual transmission, it actually had five shift forks and if you look at a diagram for how the shift forks would move for each shift it's kind of funny and crazy to me but let's take a look at that so yeah looking at a picture here you can see kind of the internals of the transmission or at least this this cutaway of it and you can see the one two three four five different sliding collars that determine your gear shifters and here's the direct drive arrangement for this system so basically the position of each collar. So one would be the left, right? Uh, for some reason, I'm not sure why, but they would have uh, the C position doesn't just have the arrow right or left. It literally just says right, center. I, I, I don't know why they have the diagram like. But if you look at the arrows, each one, it's like for first gears, left, right, right, left, right. Second gear is left, right, 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 instead of left, right. And then you go all the way down. And then, of course, there's two reverse speeds. And then there was the overdrive model also, and it tells you kind of the diagram for that. Oh, yeah, so here's a picture of the gear ratios. So your first gear, if you're in the direct drive arrangement, which that just means the highest gear is a one-to-one -one input to output shaft speed, is the first gear ratio is 17.23 to one ratio. So holy mackerel, that is... A very short gear you're not going anywhere very fast in that gear and then it goes up to a 14 then an 11 9 8 6 5 4 3 even in the top ones though you have multiple different splits you have uh, 3.8 jumps to 3.14 259 214 until finally you get the 16th gear and it's a one-to-one -one ratio the overdrive gear arrangement actually reduces first gears uh, shortness so it goes from a 17.23 to 1 ratio. If you get the overdrive one, it's actually a 14.77. And But the overdrive, so you get a direct drive on 15th gear, and then the overdrive is 0.83. So, you know, in an on-highway application, you would think you'd want maybe a double overdrive, but you'd also want a really steep uh, first gear, I would think, just in case you're on a very steep hill maybe. And uh, it'd be nice to have a double overdrive as well. Uh, you know, the mid-70s, though, there weren't a lot of 80, 75-mile-per-hour uh, speed limits on, so maybe they were designing this to not be at very high road speeds. And the reverse speeds were a in the direct drive. Actually, even in the direct drive, it changes your reverse speed. So the first reverse is a 17.23, and then the high-speed one is a 9.72. In the overdrive version, it's a 14.77 and an 8.33. So it's interesting that they actually change the ratios on the lower gears and the reverse gears for the overdrive versus the direct drive model. So here's a video of them actually shifting through the servos here and it'll show you actually a video of the transmission itself. And this is in a military vehicle. Big cam and the 915 trucks, but we put it in this. Let's see what it do. Um, right now we're just doing a testing uh, make sure the valve by is operating properly. Um, umbilical cord here. 
that line is. Uh, it's got a few air leaks on it. This is Wes Simpson's channel. So you can see there's an air in, and then that three bolt pattern, that's where the umbilical cord's running off of, which is what connects it to the shifter. So there's no clutch, pedal, any brackets, stuff like that. It's pretty, as far as input go, you just have air, and then that uh, controller, the shifter. So, but, there you go. How about a little destruction of the week? In this week's destruction of the week, we have an old cat dozer, and these comes from Brian, and apparently it threw the rod out of the engine, but the engine kept running, which generally doesn't happen when you throw the rod, but somehow the rod cap stayed on the rod and threw it out, out of the way, and then it just kept running. Now, unfortunately, this was the end of the road for this dozer, and apparently they tore it down and sold it for scrap, which is kind of a sad ending to this old dozer. I'm sure it has quite the story to tell, but not really sure if it was worth fixing. Apparently it wasn't. Thank you to Brian for sending these pictures, and let's get back to the video. So that asks the question, since they produced these and even made them for the military, why didn't you ever see them in an on-highway application? Kenworth, Peterbilt, Freightliner, International, I'm sure Cal would have been happy to sell them to them, and I'm sure there were some meetings that involve pitching it to them, but my guess would be, which I couldn't actually find any information on this, and of course we're talking about 50 years, folks, ago. My guess would be the cost. Of course, Cat is not known for having the least expensive parts or components out there. My guess would be in a trucking market where you have pretty tight margins, if someone's willing to spend a little more for a Cat engine, I don't think they'd want to add possibly twice the cost, which I'm not sure what the original cost was. I tried to find out, and there's really nowhere I could find since they didn't produce them. There's no original price sheet or anything to compare it to an Eaton manual transmission. You know, maybe an Eaton back in the day was $1,200 to produce, and this may have been three or $4,000, which, of course, by the end would have significantly increased the cost to the truck and perhaps... That's why they didn't go with it. Or maybe the manufacturers of the trucks thought that perhaps it wasn't going to sell well or wasn't a proven enough product to put in their trucks. They were just going to stick with the manual transmissions for the time. Maybe one of you guys knows the answer. If you do, why don't you leave a comment telling me exactly why or if you know the cost evolved. I, I can't find it anywhere. Of course, the military, not necessarily an endless budget, but pretty much closest thing to an endless budget when they're ordering stuff so they also the military in general really does not like manual transmissions they want the simplest thing to operate as possible in general so they don't want you to have to get a pilot's license to drive a truck so semi-automatic transmission it is i guess of course they run pretty much all automatic transmissions now but that seems to be the reason why would at least in what I can find, which is almost nothing online, would be the cost most likely was the reason they didn't produce it. Still a very cool, very interesting piece of automotive and diesel equipment history here. The CAT 7155 transmission. Definitely something pretty interesting to learn about, at least on my end. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.